This is Short-Term Rental Management, the show that is all about short-term rental property management with your host, yours truly, Luke Carl. Welcome to the program. It's great to have you, Short-Term Rental Management with long hair, Luke. It is, uh, it's an honor. It's a privilege. I love you. Uh, and uh, today we're going to talk about managing short-term rentals. We're going to talk about getting, how do I get more bookings? You want to know how I get more bookings, how you make more money, how you get better reviews? You are in the right place with the proud owner of the highest grossing property in Destin, Florida, 2023 year to date. That is me, your host, Luke Carl, Cashflow Carl. And today, uh, the great honor of having one of the best co-hosts ever, old friend of mine, one of the best in the business, Mr. Pravan. He is the godfather of short-term rental. He's a badass. Um, and uh, looking forward to talking to him about why you are not getting any Verbo bookings. Come party with me, Cashflow Carl at BPCon. I'm hosting the short-term rental workshop. You can sign up for this when you sign up for BPCon. You can do that at biggerpockets.com slash events. This is October 15th, October 15th through the 17th for the event. I am speaking at two different presentations, but uh, what you're looking to sign up for is the short-term rental workshop hosted by yours truly, Cashflow Carl, the Reverend of Real Estate and Avery Carl. So the short-term rental workshop, BPCon 2023, October 15th. Sign up before it sells out. Here we are. We did it. Short-term rental management. We have arrived, and it is good to be here. And there you are. Look at you. Look at how good-looking you are. Looking good. Take a look at my folks. <laughs> and I know you're a huge Howard Stern fan, so you know exactly where I'm ripping all that stuff off from. And a big Baba Booey to you, Mr. P. Big Daddy P, Mr. Pavan Metarata. So uh, just uh, no introduction needed here, but I'm giving you one anyway. We know each other a long time, way before real estate. As you can tell, we're both wearing the rock and roll shirts today. We uh, we met in the rock and roll world, uh, both uh, diehard rock and rollers, and uh, still going to rock shows all the time. We'll talk about that a little later. I'm going to ask you about that, actually, because I've got a couple coming up that I'm psyched about. But uh, Big Pavan has been in the short-term rental world longer than anybody I've ever met. Uh, this guy's got a wealth of knowledge, and he's a total rock star, and we are uh, grateful. I mean, we, we we are privileged to have you here with us today as we talk about uh, Verbo. Verbo. So uh, what we have happen constantly is folks posting that we see it on the internet. We I get phone calls. I get texts. All this craziness about I don't like Verbo. Uh, Verbo doesn't get any bookings. It's uh, it's uh, the people were annoying. It's old people, that kind of thing. And um, and the website stinks and the app stinks. And a lot of that is true, quite frankly. Uh, but yeah. today we are going to uh, uncover the mysteries of Verbo. And, and the goal here on today's program is to figure out how we can get you more Verbo bookings because you're talking to two gentlemen who have been in this business for a long time and we both love Verbo. As a matter of fact, Pavan, when I first met you, we both had short terms. Didn't know it. I did not know you had short terms. You did not know I had short terms. And you were super pro Verbo, and I was super pro Airbnb. I was on Verbo. I've always been pro Verbo. My very first booking ever was a Verbo. Um, and so I've always loved it. But you had like this major affinity towards it. And I think it's because you've been around so damn long that Airbnb was like brand new and nobody ever even knew what it was. So, uh, wh wh where do you, wh where do you take it from there? Yeah, I mean, like I was, when I first met you, I was a little scared of Airbnb to be honest with you, cause it was all new and sexy and I didn't know where to start. And I was in Verbo since 2011 and getting bookings in. So when I first started, you know, I was with a, with a, with a property manager, cause that was the way you did things back then. And then I realized that, hey, if I could throw up a verbal listing, I can help fill in these dates that they're not filling. And then I realized, oh, hey, they're filling in the easy dates and I'm paying the commission for spring break and snowbirds. And I'm giving them the leads from Verbo for the slow season. So why don't I just do it my, the whole thing myself? So that was when we started, you know, moving from PM to self-manage. But man, Verbo for us has been a great way to fill in our calendar year over year 
forty percent of, of my bookings are Verbo, so I'm, I'm getting fifty percent Airbnb, forty percent Verbo, and ten is is you know other other. So it's a it's a, a lot of money, and it's a lot of bookings. We did eight hundred and eighty one bookings, you know, over the last seven months, um, or the last year, three thousand nights stayed. So if you're not on Verbo, you're definitely missing out. There's sixteen million unique visitors to the Verbo website a month. And now that they're syndicating to the Expedia network, that's 730 million visitors. So, um, so we'll talk today about how some, some good strategies to get more exposure on Verbo, because if you're solely relying on Airbnb, you're definitely missing out. And you're also putting yourself at risk as far as if something bad happens with Airbnb, which has been known to happen, that you're kind of left holding the bag. Yes. Well, let's talk briefly about the history of the company. Um, Verbo was basically created uh, with the inception of the internet, quite frankly. Um, and uh, they, uh, well, it was home away and Verbo. So that's another thing we need to get out of the way. You know, there's, there are two, originally it was home away. I think that was the first one. Is that, is that your uh, understanding as well? Yeah, I think so. Then Verbo yeah. went kind of gobbled up a bunch of the smaller players um, early on. Yes. And so they eventually became the same company. And then in 2011, which is when he's referring to, um, they be, they got acquired by the Expedia Group. Um, and uh, oh, no, it would have been 2015. They bought it for uh, $4 billion. Um, and that's a lot of dough. That's a lot, lot of dough. In the late 20, uh, the late 2000s, uh, like 2000 zero era, a decade, uh, they brought in a bunch of... Uh, uh, celebrities, Chevy Chase was talking about it and, uh, they had it on the Super Bowl commercials and, uh, all this craziness. And, um, and, uh, uh, to my knowledge, it was originally started by a gentleman who I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, but in, uh, in Denver, Colorado. And, uh, today, of course, we're talking about a very, very big company that is uh, based out of, uh, Austin, Texas. Um, as a matter of fact, I remember years ago, they used to have, uh, I had a bat phone phone number for, for Verbo and it was the Austin headquarters and it was a, a, a Texas area code. It was a regular old phone number and it went straight to, there's a giant building there in Austin that says Verbo at the top. And it went straight to that building and the folks in that building were, were like, they're rock stars, you know? So this was my earliest uh, kind of memories of dealing with Verbo. I still have the number of my phone, but it I do too. I do too. I may have I may have gotten it from you. I don't know, uh, but I I at one point I I just started asking them. You know, when I, and early in the career, there's something to take note of when you're when you're starting out. In my opinion, or at least what worked for me, I called the platforms constantly to learn how they work and ask questions. And a lot of times I was mad about something, but I was still learning. And I got to the point where every time I was calling Verbo, I would say, "Are you in Texas? Are you in Texas?" And as I, I remember, I believe I was at a uh, bar in Nashville and I had to call him for some whatever incident. And I asked her if she was in Texas and she goes, yes, I am. Would you like the Texas phone number? I think that's where I got it from. She just gave it to me. And uh, <laughs> unless it was from you, if you remember that differently. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So just to be complete, you know, completely aware of the history of the company, this is a big history uh, they, they literally started like basically when the internet was coming around, you know, in the early, 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 uh, two thousands. Uh, and again, I don't know, I don't have all the history between the differences of home away and Verbo. By the time I came around, they were the same company, but they did have two different websites. Um, and, uh, you, you had, a, you had your Verbo number. Uh, and a lot of times if you were super early on, your Verbo number would have an HA attached to it. I think my first two or three properties uh, have HA attached to their number. Um, and so that you, that knew, you knew that it was home away and that you're old school, you know? Um, and so anyway, they rebranded uh, to Verbo officially uh, really not that long ago that, that they did away with home away. I don't think the home away website's around at all anymore, but, uh, and if it is, I don't believe it functions, but a um, little bit of the history there. Uh, for all intents and pur purposes, the uh, HomeAway family was created in about 2005. Uh, do you remember any of it uh, differently than that? No, I mean I got in in 2011, so by that time, the RBO right was was the the brand, and I think everything was moving that way. And then a couple of years ago, it became Verbo. Right? So right, which Verbo was the original. So HomeAway kind of came around, and and I think it was almost like a competition. 
uh, a, a competitor. Uh, and Verbo, I, I googled it. The uh, the gentleman's name. We got to give him credit here. Um, uh, Aurora, Colorado. Uh, the company was started by a guy named David Klaus. He was a retired teacher. Uh, in 1995, okay, 1995, uh, Pavan, do you remember when the internet became a thing? It had to have been not too much earlier than that, right? I don't remember. Earlier, but not much, man. I mean, I remember getting into internet marketing and the web stuff in the early 90s. So I was getting out of college. Yep, so, yeah. yep. I would have been 14 years old in, when Verbo was uh, created. <laughs> Um, and I am not 14 years old anymore, but, uh, yeah, they originally started as a subscription model, which they still have that. Let's get into the weeds there, you know, because back, uh, he was very ahead of his time, this gentleman, David Klaus, because now if you want to sell a company, you need subscriptions. Uh, it's like right. the thing, you know? Yep. Um, and, uh, and he did that back in the day he had, uh, he started the company on the, the, well, now it's five, 600 bucks a, a year. Who knows what it was back then? And you could list your property um, and uh, and that would uh, get you eyeballs on the property and uh, and hopefully get you some bookings. And, and that's how it's like, whole... like tiers of, of of subscriptions. You get like a platinum that gives you guaranteed placement near the top or a bronze, which kind of gets you in the door. And so you could they would charge more based on visibility. Oh, I don't remember that. That was before my time. Yeah. OK, so I always, always bought the platinum because I wanted to be as close to the top as possible. It was, I mean, it worked. Cool. So by about 2006, Verbo had 65,000 properties on their uh, platform, and they were adding about uh, 100 new listings per day. And uh, and then, of course, uh, the 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 uh, home away thing started in in 2015 ish. Uh, well, they they uh, uh, they merged in 2015, but uh, you know the rest is history. Um, and then in 2019, they rebranded as uh, Just Verbo and did away with the HomeAway brand. Although both websites were still definitely still functioning in 2019. Um, I, I don't. I remember the HomeAway thing going away not that long ago. I don't know. I don't have the timeline on the uh, on the uh, the history here from the old interweb. But I feel like up until maybe two years ago, you could book something on HomeAway. But I'm sure. Uh, just did verbo. I was happy with that. So I knew I knew the listings were going out there everywhere. So I maintained it in, in the VRBO website and let it go where it had to go. That's what I did too. I just I never I never messed with HomeAway. It was all Ver if you posted on Verbo, it would automatically go to HomeAway back in the day, you know. Right. So um, and then let's yeah, let's talk about the subscription history there. You know, it used to be when I first got on, it was 500 bucks a year. And you, uh, did, there were no fees basically, or the fees go down to the point where they are, uh, you know, rather insignificant. Um, and I'll be honest, when I first started, I didn't like that. I didn't, I actually didn't subscribe because I was getting more Airbnb and I figured it was a waste of my money. And I was also super broke back then, you know, and, uh, 500 bucks is a big deal on a little zero bedroom house that I could barely, uh, you know, afford quite frankly, um, and then eventually, you know, I probably you were involved and I sat down and did the math and, um, you know, well, over time, the verbose, uh, bookings kind of took over a little bit and, and the 500 bucks made a lot of sense. But now if you're to come on, uh, verbo doesn't have that anymore. Um, and, in, but in my experience, uh, if you call them enough times, they will, um, give in, uh, you know, you have to call like a hundred times to get somebody and it is worth it. I think, uh, do you find that the subscription is worth it if you can get it? Definitely. It's 600 bucks a year now instead of 500. So it's, you know, a little bit of an increase, but not massive. Um, if you're an existing customer and have a subscription plan already, when you fire up a new property, it's already there. It's an option. You can select the subscription versus the you know, the paper booking model as it were. So, and yeah, I, I think it's still fairly easy to get um, if, as a new customer as well. If you call, um, you you will get the sub. And it, it's as soon as, so Verbo is a slow build, right? It takes time to get the listing seasoned enough to get the views and get the bookings. But once it starts rolling, it's like a freight train. It's like Airbnb out the gate promotes your listing hard. And what happens is Airbnb takes over your calendar. It fills it so fast that Verbal can't compete. Um, but if getting getting the, to answer your question, getting some subscription is worth it because the bookings will come, and then you're paying eight three percent of your you know credit card fees essentially instead of the eight eight percent, which is five percent, which is commission plus the three percent booking. So 
Um, I have 32 listings on Verbo. About half of them are on subscription. I do have half that aren't um, simply because for Airbnb keeps me busy. So it's for those, it's not worth it. But every year I evaluate, say, hey, maybe I should I switch over? And um, every year I switch more and more onto the, onto the subscription. Well, in 32 times $600, that's $20,000 a year. You know, right. but if you're saving that that's much in, in, in booking fees, you know, so you got to do, you probably literally have to do the math every year. Uh, you know, I do. Yeah, I do. how much did I pay in verbo booking fees? Was it more than 20 grand? Because if it was, I'm just going to go ahead and do, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and and you probably with your portfolio the size of yours, you're going to have to analyze per property because some properties are probably you know getting more action than others on on Verbo. So let's talk about that. I agree with you. I have been preaching this for years. Nobody wants to listen. I think that Airbnb uh, is you know young and techy and hip and cool and sexy and fun. And I think they figured out that if they come in there and push bookings to new properties. They're going to get Verbo just scooted right out of the way. There's a statistic out there. 90% of all vacations are booked 30 days in advance or less. Um, and so all Airbnb has to do is swallow up your first 30 days of your property and there's nothing left to book. And I think that is a huge factor for two reasons. Number one, pushes Verbo out of the way so that they almost can't gain any traction. Number two, it sucks to get the new the new hosts in. It's, oh my goodness, this Airbnb is so fun and sexy. If you give somebody money, they are going to like you. Okay? So that's what yes. Airbnb does. That's what they figured out. This was calculated. Don't you think it was calculated? Definitely. I, I launched a new listing a month ago. Um, I launched Airbnb first. A day later, I launched Verbo. And I just now, it's June 20, July 25. I just now started getting Verbo bookings. And finally... Um, but Airbnb gobbled up my calendar as soon as I launched it. Within a day, the day of launch, I had a booking for that weekend. So um, they're great at, at promoting your at promoting new listings. You got to get the new listing discount. I know it's not Airbnb session, but um, they definitely no. do a good job of pushing pushing everybody out. Yeah, but in your defense, I mean, it's almost to the point where it's like, okay, I'm brand new. I just got an ass load of uh, Airbnb. Verbo is boring and I don't even rem remember my password anymore because nothing happens over there. What's the average noob going <laughs> to do? They're going to go straight to Airbnb and they're going to forget about this Verbo. It's a waste of my time, you know, and then it is a completely different culture. Let's talk about that culture. Airbnb's young and hip and cool reviews and modern and TikTok and all this kind of thing. And Verbo is not. It's uh let's let's get this out of the way. Verbo's website and their app, pretty damn terrible. Uh are they not? I mean they're okay. buggy, they're compared they're, to Airbnb, right? Very glitchy. They're going through a technology change. I think Chuck has mentioned this before. Um, it's a bit flaky. The website's flaky, the app is flaky. Um, it's no fun to deal with at times. And I've had double bookings through oh, Acal. Yeah. yeah, it's well, he referred to Chuck Kramer from the short term shop. We love that guy. He's awesome. Uh, and he's, he's super deep, deep into the, uh, the logistics of, of bookings and things. And, uh, and, and yeah, it, it is, it's glitchy. Their website stinks. So it's also taking into consideration. The culture is older. Uh, average Airbnb guest is 34 years old. Average Verbo guest is 47 years old. And I'd like to see proof of that because, uh, I'm getting pretty close to that age, and I, I don't think so. I think most of my guests are quite a bit older than that, but that's the number I've I've done in my my research shows is 47, um, and so there is a difference there, you know. And there's going to be in in general, I feel that the culture is uh, more accepting to families, which is really probably pretty good as a landlord. You know, the type of folks that are going to bring kids. So that's I mean, now we're getting way into the weeds, but type of folks that are going to bring kids are probably going to be a little more chill and a little less, you know, tequila and keg of beer than, than the younger folks, but the kids can tear things up more. So that's probably even Steven for me on that side of the culture things. But, and also let's not forget they their television commercials. Verbo's television commercials are out there saying, bring your family. This is a safe place. Right. You're not going to get murdered in this house. You know, like it's not a horror movie at this house. That's like their whole <laughs> thing, you know? Um, and so when you're out there spending billions I'm of dollars. The bats. I people jumping on beds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But when you're out there spending billions I'm of like, dollars. Don't do that. Don't, do, don't jump on the beds. 
Uh, billions of dollars on uh, television commercials saying bring the family. That's the vibe. You know, it's a different vibe. So, um, and, and, you know, it's difficult for me because I, I sympathize with a noob. I do. I was there, you know, I, 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 I fell in that Airbnb thing. Airbnb so hip and cool. But at the same time, I was never, ever anti-verbo. And I see this anti-verbo thing happening. It's like almost like a movement of anti-verbo. And I just don't get it. How do you get to the point where you are like this? I'm not even going to use this giant company. I, th I think it's short-sighted. I think you have, you have to. If you want to be successful, you can't have all your eggs in one basket. And people make fun of me because I rely heavily on the OTAs. I mean, I just told you 90% of my bookings are from the two, two big OTAs. Um, why don't you focus more on direct booking? You know, you, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I've outsourced my marketing to these guys because I want to spend my time doing it. But at least I have two. Like, I'm not solely dependent on one versus the other. Um, and uh, there was a time, I, I, you know this, where I got kicked off Airbnb completely. Well, let's talk about fun. that. Let's talk let's about that. Now, see. be careful because somebody might be listening and kick us off again. But... <laughs> Uh, you know, that is a thing at Airbnb that doesn't really exist at Verbo. So what happened right. in your in your your circumstance? This episode is brought to you by the premier short term rental Facebook group, short term rental long term wealth. We have nearly 50,000 members. And this is the biggest independently owned and operated SCR Facebook group. And it has been curated by yours truly, Cashflow Carl. Join us on Facebook. Search the groups for short-term rental, long-term wealth. That's short-term rental, long-term wealth on Facebook. So this was November of 21, I think it was. Oh my goodness. Was it that long ago? I don't know, yeah. Um, for about a week, I was down. They shut my account, canceled all my bookings, um, and I was freaking out. I had, you know, what, what happened? I still don't know what happened. They tell me it was a glitch. Um, that they were going through cleaning some accounts and there was a glitch and they closed my account. So it took me days to finally get a hold of somebody to admit that that was a glitch. And then it took me days to help, to get help, to undo it. And then to, I had to reach out to all my guests and rebook them if I could. So luckily I was using a, a PMS, I was using, you know, I think IGMS or Guesty at the time. So I had their contact info. So I was able to basically, I sent a group text um, to all the guests said, hey, this is what happened. It was a, it was a mistake. If you're still in a book, blah, 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 here's how to get back on. So I recovered from it, but it was just extremely stressful. Um, but thankfully, I had Verbo then, right? So I still had a, a good amount of bookings through Verbo. And worst case, I was prepared to rebook all these guests on, on through direct or through Verbo if I had to. But um, that was scary, man. That was we. We're very unhappy when, when that happened and freaked out for a while. Been asleep for two days. Well, which uh, briefly, which uh, management software are you using right now? Right now, I'm using Guesty for hosts. Okay. Um, and uh, did this happen like in the middle of the night? You just woke up and looked at your phone and you couldn't, there, there's nothing? Yes. I think I tried to log into the app. It wouldn't let me. And um, it was late at night. I think for whatever reason, it was like about 11 o'clock at night. And I went online to do something and I realized everything was gone. My calendar was empty. Um, so I started making phone calls right away and then that's why I didn't sleep the first night and the second night I started drafting templates the next day, getting in contact with guests, trying to you know, recover whatever I could until I finally got Airbnb to help me. So they, finally they put a team together of like four people in the Philippines who were calling my guests and rebooking them for me, but it took me about a week to get there. Well, this is a little different than some of the other horror stories you see, right. you hear. Now, this one, I almost kind of, you know, it's almost kind of like, oh, you, I don't know that I sympathize with them because it was a horrible situation. But, I, you know, big giant company like that, I could see, you know, some sort of mistake kind of happening. And it seems like it was there was no no no, no malicious activity or, 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 or hate uh, of any kind or uh, broken rules of any kind. So. Uh, I mean, still a terrible situation. How long did it take you to get that fixed? It was about a week from start to finish. And then I did lose some bookings, but I got them. I booked them later. The same folks or uh, were, uh, you know, I, great deal? No, I saved about 80%. I saved about 80% 80% of the bookings. They rebooked um, because they wanted to come. You know, they you spend your time research finding a property that you looks cool. 
and you want to go there. So fortunately, they they were sympathetic as to what happened. They were all rebooked at the same rate that they canceled on. So was your message thread still there? You knew who how to find these people? Because I because I had their contact info in the PMS. Mm. That's so crazy. The PMS the PMS got disconnected from Airbnb because my Airbnb account was shut down. Have you ever had anything like this or even heard of anything like this happening on Verbo? No, I have not. I've heard Airbnb, trust and safety issues, same result, but not on Verbo. As far as I know, I, I think people may have a listing that gets shut down here and there, but not their entire account. Yes, and I will say, I'm going to go so far as to say, I feel, and again, if anybody from Airbnb is listening, I love you. You've changed my life. I will champion you until the day I die. You're awesome. I would not want anything to do with running that massive company. It sounds like a lot of work, and you guys are doing a great job. I'm proud of you. I agree. That being said, I do feel there's less drama on good old Verbo. Uh, do, you, do you agree? I do agree. I do, def definitely. I got to... This is last week I've had people um, reach out to Airbnb and make comments that I have to then provide, you know, three rounds of paperwork to prove that what they said was false. Um, and that doesn't happen. That does not happen with the verbo. Um, oh, you got bugs. Uh, here's a receipt of the bug guy. Send us like a document that says you don't have bugs. I'm like, OK, so this is things, weird things where you don't get the benefit of the doubt. And with the verbal, you get the benefit of the doubt as a host. Right. I agree. That being said, I do not in any way think that Airbnb is doing anything wrong. I love you. <laughs> I do. I really do, man. I love Airbnb. I mean, without it, we wouldn't be here. You know, we'd still we'd still have to be using those damn property managers. So um, uh, we love them very much. But yes, drama for me, that's the word. There is way less drama on Verbo. It's almost like you just call, tell them what the issue is. They're like, OK, let's. How do we fix this? And let's move on to the next person. You know what I mean? And at Airbnb, it seems like they just drag everything out for three or four days and um, and, and drama, drama. Uh, and I love them. And I do love them. And I do love I them. Love them. Um, so how do we fix it? That's what I want to know. How do we fix? All right, let me paint you a picture before we get into that. Uh, remember that question. But what happens to me all the time, like I would say multiple, I don't know, several times a week. Somebody emails me, somebody texts me, and I'm very happy to hear those people. I want to hear from you. Bring it all, man. Let me say whatever I can do to help. Also, we have that Facebook group, Short-Term uh, Rental Listing Advice, strlistingadvice.com. Uh, you can post your listings in there. And I'm here to tell you the number one thing that I, the biggest mistake. Now, there's a lot of, there's really four things, right? Okay, there's your pictures stink. Your price prices are probably number one. Um, uh, and uh, and then not on, on not on Verbo. I see that constantly, and it makes no sense to me. Let me hit you with this. Uh, my research shows that nine we're up about nine billion dollars in revenue, Airbnb. Uh, Air, uh, Verbo is very secretive because it's a big uh, you know conglomerate. The, 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 if that's even the right word, uh, Expedia Group. They're fairly secretive about their numbers, but my research shows somewhere around eleven billion dollars in revenue for Verbo. So. Really, at the end of the day, from the research we've been able to find, Verbo has more money flowing around than Airbnb. And I think a lot of folks don't realize that. They just kind of get sucked into this Airbnb took over my calendar thing. Verbo's stupid. There's nobody over there. There's nobody hanging out on Verbo. And it's just not true. There's actually more money on Verbo. Let me tell you a story. This lady, uh, uh, hopefully she's not going to listen. She'll be mortified. But she called me. Uh, it was a random person. She wasn't a short-term shop client or anything. She just, she saw something I posted. I said, oh, let me get on the phone with you. She, she wanted to pay me or something. I said, no, let me just get on the phone and, and, and let's have a, a chat. And she was uh, inquiring about how she could get more bookings. And I'm telling you, I have this same story happen to me all the time. And we started talking, yakking this and that. She had 20 properties, which is a lot. I'm like, first of all, if you've got 20 properties, you don't need me. I mean, like how getting to 20 properties is by far the hard part. Like the cash to get these things is, is way harder than actually running these damn things, you know? So I said to her, well, here's what happened. It boiled down to the fact that she was not on Verbo and she was not having it at all. I was like, sweetheart, listen, here's the deal. You are 
saying no to an $11 billion a year company that does exactly what you're looking for them to do. Uh, what you're looking for is more bookings. That's what they do. They have a ton of revenue over there. And you're saying no. You're saying no to that. You're coming to me, who's just a dude who's, yes, I'm really freaking good at this. But, you know, I'm not an $11 billion company. So this story repeats itself in my life over and over. And to be honest with you, the whole reason I wanted to have this podcast was to get upstream of that issue. How can I talk people in to the fact that Verbo is good for their business? And what was that question? The original question. Uh, I told you I, I needed you to remember it. Awesome. Anyway, how do we fix it? How do we fix it? How do we fix it? Here's how we fix it. Okay. First of all, there's many benefits of being on Verbo, right? If you're API connected through your PMS, you control the money. Um, so all the owner as zealots love that. So you are actually a merchant of record. Um, you collect the money. You don't pay Verbo anything. Uh, you, so let me pay them something. But you, you know, essentially you save your, that three percent credit card processing fee. Chargebacks you handle yourself. Um, you know, people love and, and you get the money right away, right? So you have to worry about going through Verbo's payment processing. Um, how do we fix it? I mean, there's some things you can do. There are table stakes, right? You have to have instant book on. You have to have a a flexible-ish cancellation policy. So Verbo ran a promotion a couple of months ago where they said, if you drop your cancellation policy to moderate, you can get a subscription for a dollar for a year. So I did that. I was like, well, why not? So I switched my cancellation policy to moderate. That's the one that they're, they say is, uh, I think it's one down from the very flexible one. Um, you have to, if you, if you, if you to make sure all your amenities or set, like check more amenities, the most, as many as you can, including outdoor amenities, indoor amenities, because people will filter on those amenities. And that will, even though your ranking may look low, if you have an amenity someone doesn't have, it's gonna boost you up in the results. So um, when you get a booking, you get boost points from Verbo um, and they expire after a year. So you have to okay. use them, but essentially it's almost a game. You go through, you spend your boost points, to boost your listing for up, you know, whatever dates you select. And even if you're buried at say search position 400 and the boost only gets you to 350, it's still worth it to spend the points. Because like I said, when people filter on amenities or as things get booked, you will start to rise up. So that I I, I didn't do that for a while. And I talked to my account manager at Verbo. I'm like, hey, like I have these boost points and they're sitting there, but they're not really doing much for me. And she's like, use them. You have to use them because they will, they will push you further up into the rankings. Of course, you have to get bookings to get the boost points. So it's a little bit of a catch-22. Um, but once you get them, they add up fairly quickly. Um, cleanliness, cleanliness practices, make sure you go through and fill that out um, on your amenity section, Verbo. And then pets, if you, yeah, that is always a big amenity to offer. If you accept pets, I don't. Um, I thought about it, but luckily I haven't had to. Um, and finally, for me at least, reviews. So Verbo likes to see about a 60% conversion rate from booking and stay to review. So they're saying about 60% of your guests should be leaving reviews, um, which I think is lower than Airbnb. I'm not sure what the metric is for there, but 60% is not high. Um, they're saying if you have 60 to 80%, you're doing a good job. So I actually have adopted... Um, and the review system is different than Airbnb as well. So you, it's actually all pretty much manual. So you have to go and basically every Wednesday, I call it begging for reviews. So every Wednesday afternoon, I'm begging for reviews. And why Wednesday afternoon? Because that's when people are on social media. They spend a lot of time on Instagram, Facebook, you know, you know TikTok, whatever. I figure if they got time to kill wasting time on social media, they might have time to leave me a review. So I'll go through every Wednesday and I'll touch every single person I haven't touched yet for review. Um, then when you do, when you refund the deposit, that's a touch. You can ask for review. When you rate them, that's a touch. So I touch each person at least three times on top of what Verbo does, which is the day of checkout to get a review. And I'm, I'm at around 70% review conversion rate. So it's still not great, um, but it's better than it was before I was doing it. If I don't beg for reviews, I don't get any. Yep. So you have to be aggressive about getting the reviews. Couple of things there. It's a it's a double edged sword with Verbo. It really is. It's not like this with Airbnb, but Verbo takes very heavy stock when you're brand new in reviews, and you it's a chicken and egg. You can't get 
reviews if you don't get bookings. So I will say in the new in the in the anti-verbo folks uh, defense, that is a, a little annoying. And I I find that to be true every single time. But there's ways around it. You have got to hustle and kiss ass and lower rates on Verbo. Do whatever it takes to get that ball rolling. I've seen folks that have gone two years before they found that finally gained enough traction on Verbo to not dislike it anymore. Uh, that's <laughs> ridiculous. You should be able to get something going within the ne- in the first you know two to three months like fairly easily. Um, and I'll be honest with you, uh, and, and Pavan just proved it. If you're not doing all this kind of stuff to get traction on Verbo to to you know have a review day, we do the same thing. We have review day, and I get together with my team. I have I have two folks that work for me full time. How many do you have? I have three full time and two floaters. Okay, I've got two full time, um, and they flip flop on their days, right? And so um, we get together when everybody's on. Uh, when all, all uh, when both of my folks are working, we get together and we go through the reviews. I have two different systems there. Um, this would be a whole nother podcast, frankly, but uh, uh, maybe we'll save that for another day. But you're right. You've got to get the reviews going. Um, and again, Verbo, not as review heavy. I mean, I, I would say that if you're not paying attention, you're going to get like 25% of your, get, of your Verbo guests that are going to review. They just don't care. It's not and maybe it's because it's again a little older and folks that are, you know, like boomers, like my my dad is never going to sit there and leave a review for anything, you know. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with it, but it, you got to get in there and hustle and beg for these reviews and make it happen or you're just not going to make it. So that's a huge one. That's a huge one. Figure out a way. Rent it to your cousin for 20 bucks even if he doesn't show up. <laughs> you know, get a review somehow, some way, do whatever it takes. You're a property manager. Manage the damn property. If you're sitting at 90% Airbnb, you are making a mistake. That is my opinion. I agree. And I think it's worth it to lower your price a little bit on Verbo to get to attract bookings. And then I've seen people even turn off or pause their Airbnb listing um, to free up the calendar to let Verbo fill it. Um, and it, I've I've heard mixed results with that. Some people are like, oh, yeah, it worked. I started getting more Verbo. And others are like, I got nothing. I'm still low. And they turn they turn Airbnb back on and they're off to the races again. So um, but it's worth a test, especially if you have multiple listings to you know turn one off, turn one on, see what see how it goes. But definitely lower prices when you first start. And it sucks because you want to make as much money as you can, especially you, you just bought this property, you spent a ton of money and you're down payment and decorating and rehabbing, and you're ready to make some money, and you're like, ah, oh, I gotta eat some lower prices for a while, but it's worth the investment to get that balance um, and have them control of your business as well. 100%. 100%. Um, so in other words, you got to work harder. <laughs> you know, work. Um, if you are sitting there with no verbo, um, you're just not, you're not doing your job. You're really not doing your job. Um, and uh, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of sad. So, you know, $11 billion on that company, on that website, go out there and get you a couple of bucks. Uh, that's all there is to it. You know what I mean? Um, so what else? Did we miss anything? You, you mentioned it earlier, but God, you got to have good pictures. Pay the $500, whatever it costs to get the professional photos in there. Um, stay on top of your pricing, especially this year. Um, a lot of the last, you mentioned, a lot of last minute bookings. Um, don't be afraid to discount to get the, to get people in there. And I'm doing that a lot this year. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the percentage thing uh, or the uh, the lower price on Verbo thing. Here's some cr- here's some tricks that I did back in the day. Uh, and again, ver- pro Verbo from day one. I've always loved it. Um, I definitely leaned towards Airbnb for most of my early days. Um, and my very first booking ever was a, a Verbo. Fun, another funny thing about my very first booking ever: a tree fell on the roof of the house in the middle, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, my first guest. So uh, I'm still here. Uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of folks would have been like, "Oh hell no, I'm not doing this." But um, some some tricks that I've done to get more Verbo bookings over the years. Um, I have uh, lowered uh, my prices on Verbo. Uh, and you can do that with your management software. There's going to be a button on there uh, to uh, change, you know, a discrepancy basically between Airbnb and Verbo. And when I was really down and out, you know, I found, I, I was about two, three years ago, I found one property uh, to have basically no Verbo. And I said, okay, I got to fix this. You know, how do I fix this? First of all, Wanting to fix it 
is number one, okay? Just like anything. You can't have a happy marriage unless you work at it and try and things like that. And uh, you can't be good at your job if you don't try and care. You got to care. So I said, okay, um, uh, I care. I want to go in there and, and fix this. And uh, that was no doubt in my mind. I, I, this, this, noob, this noob vibe that's going around out there that seems to be catching on and getting bigger, this anti-verbo thing, it, it's never been in my head. I don't understand it. I don't like it. Uh, but so what I did was I looked up one day, my calendar was all Airbnb. How do I fix this? So I, I did a 15% discount. I hate to use that word, but it was a decrease uh, for Verbo. Uh, and I also, on that same property, of course, I've, you know, I'm a little deeper into my career here and I have the luxury to, of a ton of reviews and things like that. I snoozed my Airbnb. I just turned it off for like two months and that's freaking scary. It is. But my calendar was so full was like, okay, I mean, I was probably six weeks booked, you know, uh, advanced availability. And I, I just snoozed it. You know, all you're doing was just basically turning it off so nobody can see it anymore. And it was scary. It was, it was like, oh my God, I'm going to lose these other people. I'm not going to get anybody. And, and guess what? I waited it out. I waited it out. I waited it out. Week went by two weeks, stressful, 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 three, four weeks, five weeks. And then boom, they started coming in. Why? Because there was availability. It, my calendar was no longer, you know, let a week go by. It's now five weeks. Let a week go by. It's now four weeks. You get to the point where Verbo sees with the algorithms that there's availability. Okay. Let's pay a little attention here. Plus you had, I had a lower rate on it at the time and it, it worked. That property skyrocketed Verbo. It took about six weeks, uh, but uh, it's sitting at about 60, 40 right now. Uh, now today, I don't like to do that. I prefer I prefer to do a little increase on Airbnb and a lot of people have a trouble with that. Why would I charge extra for Airbnb when I like it better? But for whatever reason, sometimes that's what you got to do to kind of keep the equilibrium. And I'm happy with doing that because to me, I feel like I am doing my job. If I'm keeping those two, you know, it's almost like they're like brother and sister and you gotta, you know, like I have kids, you know, so it's like, okay, Airbnb stole Verbo's toy. I got to go back over there and get the toy and give it back to Verbo. You know what I mean? So uh, with the stupid analogies, but uh, you know, so I've done tricks like that in the past. You got to do whatever it takes. If you're sitting there with no Verbo, you are making a mistake. And I can guarantee you in 12 months, a couple of things there. I can guarantee you're new. If you're not getting any Verbo, I can guarantee you're, you're been in this business for less than two years, or you just straight up don't care. And you probably shouldn't be in the business. And I hate to say that. Uh, but I can also tell you that as time goes by, you're going to look up and you're going to say, my calendar's not quite as full as I'd like it to be because you're not new and exciting anymore. You're not exciting anymore to Airbnb. You're, you're not fresh meat. And you're going to look up and you're going to say, you know what? Wait a minute. My calendar's not full as full as it used to be. And I will tell you, here's another thing. All these people that come to me, that, that, that lovely lady that came to me last week who did not like what I, she argued with me. She's like, Verbo is so stupid. I am never going to use that. And I'm like, well, why are you calling me for more bookings? She says, I can't help, man, if you're not going to get on Verbo. So um, uh, at a certain point, you're going to have no choice, quite frankly. You're going to look up and it's not going to be as sexy and full and, and flush with cash as it was. And my point, well, here's my point. You're not going to realize it. You're not going to realize that it's because you neglected Verbo for two years. And you almost, you're probably not even going to believe it. You know, I've told that to countless people. You've got to get on Verbo. And they're like, what? You know, they look at me like I, I got six heads. And I'm like, you need to get on Verbo. You're in this for two years. Your calendar's getting thin. You're not on Verbo. Hello. I mean, it's common sense. All right. Let's talk concerts. I think we did a good job there. Again, Airbnb, I love you. I do. I love all that. The pink. I love the colors. You know, the whole thing. It's all calculated and they're running a good ship. But man, I do love my Verbo. It's less drama. It really is. Um, concert. What do you got going on? Oh, sorry. Girl, go ahead. No, it's, it's, it's Verbo support. Easy to deal with. That's true. Um, I mean, we didn't talk too much about that. But that, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pro, definitely a lot of pros. Yeah, there's some cons as well. The website does kind of suck now but they're in the middle of this transition hopefully that'll clean us off up um i'm a huge fan of her i do have some properties that are all verbo i have some that are all airbnb um i could probably do a better job of that balance per property but like i said overall from a portfolio standpoint you know 60 percent 40 percent 
I'm I'm not too upset by that. Too upset, or sorry, fifty percent and forty percent is not bad for me. Right now, uh, do you have any idea why those particular properties end up being all Airbnb, or the another, another property ends up being all verbal? Do you have, do you know why that happens? Actually, I have a theory in that, and I think you may agree with me. I think the bigger properties actually perform better on Verbo because again, it's families or or multiple families looking to travel together, and the generation, the demo is a little old, excuse, a little older. Um, all my bigger properties perform much better on Verbo than my smaller ones. So my four bedrooms, my three bedroom, even some of the two bedrooms do really, really well on Verbo compared to like the, my little love making machine honeymoon cabins. They they crush on Airbnb. I agree. I agree. And I, you almost kind of want it that way. I, I would prefer because it's a different vibe. Verbo right. folks tend to book a little further in advance. Do you agree with that? I do. Yeah. Okay. And I would prefer that my bigger properties get booked a little further in advance. So there's a win. You know, it's, yep. it's just, it's a cultural difference between the two uh, uh, OTAs. And again, yeah, bigger properties, probably going to be more families and Verbo is definitely marketing themselves. I mean, and if nothing else, they're spending a ridiculous amount of money on marketing yep. towards families. So I feel that it's probably in my best interest to try and push my bigger properties to Verbo. Also, um, you know, things move quick, fast, uh, in a hurry, like a bunny with Airbnb. Airbnb is tortoise and hare. It's tortoise and hare. Yes. Airbnb moves fast, quick, boom, boom, boom. Also lends itself to smaller properties. I can jump in and out of this house for one night, two nights, move on to the next. A big ass property, you're probably going to be dealing with more people. It takes more time in advance to get it booked. You're probably going to stay for longer because it was a pain in the ass to get all those people there. You don't want to come in for one and a half days and uh, and all that stress for one day, two day vacation. You're going to stay for a little longer in a bigger property. All that stuff kind of lends itself more. Um, to the Verbo side. Good point. Tortoise and hare. hundred percent. Verbo's that damn turtle comes along and it's like, oh, this calendar's all full. It's booked up. I'm going to move on down the road to the next house really slowly. So if you let the turtle come, if you let the rabbit come in and scoop up your calendar, there goes the turtle. Who wins the race? <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, man. Anyway, all right, concert. What have you been to lately? What are you going to soon? What's next on the calendar concert docket? We got Shine Down coming up soon. We got Godsmack coming up, Guns N' Roses in Knoxville. Um, we have Rock Island. Oh, no, I'm going you? to Guns N' Roses in Biloxi, I think. I'm going with Julie and Derek. Oh, well, maybe I am going to that. Um, I have to check the calendar. Awesome. I'm going to see him for sure, but I feel like it was in <laughs> Biloxi. All right, I'm, no, go I'm going to Gene R. Uh, I've mm -hmm. got uh, uh, I've got Kiss in in Knoxville, nice. uh, front row with the kids. Um, I've got uh, Power Trip Festival. I've got uh, Steel Are you doing that? Yeah, we're going. Uh, this Friday is uh, Steel Panther locally, so that's cool. Don't have to go anywhere. Uh, we're getting a few concerts in this summer. Uh, good times. Definitely, definitely not taking the kids to Steel Panther. If anybody, <laughs> if anybody knows who they are, that don't take the kids. <laughs> not family friendly. Uh, all right, man. Well, listen, always a pleasure. You're a rock star. You're one of the best in the business. It's, it's uh, awesome to have you come uh, co-host the show with me. The co-host with the most. Big P. And to quote, Pavon, and to quote Pavon on my way out the door, this is a quote that has been used in this business about a trillion times now. And of course, you stole it from the Godfather, which is the greatest place to steal anything. I'll go ahead and let you say it. Go ahead. This is the business we have chosen. You're damn right. All right. Uh, don't overthink it. <laughs>